Well, welcome everybody. This is Stale Fish Video Podcast, Episode 3, and I am super stoked tonight. I have with me Kurt Gilchrist from Tightline Films. Hey, Kurt, welcome to Stale Fish. Glad to be here, man. I'm super pumped. This is this is a rad idea. You're full of them. And get, here's yet another one. Hey, hey, let's have a boo. What's the hat say there? It says, I found animal chin. He uh, found animal chin. If anybody's got any money, he's tied up in a truck and I'll let him go. Steve Cavallaro would be so happy to hear that, man. I'm actually still afraid of Steve Cavallaro. Yeah, he's still playing in bands too. Like he's doing everything, skating, dirt biking. Uh, for those that don't know about it, look it up. The yeah. search for it. That's right. So, hey, just so everybody knows, we are running uh, FaceTime to FaceTime Wi-Fi. So, obviously, we're going to have some pops and pauses, but that's just part of the game. I like the tight line films banner in the background, man. I'm uh, Floyd Mayweather not making money. <laughs> so if you don't know, Tightline Films is a uh, fishing and outdoor genre-based indie film company that Kurt has. And I guess the first thing we need to ask Kurt is, you know, you're uh, you're big in the fishing industry. Uh, when did it all start for you? How did it all start for you? Everybody has a story of using one of their dad's fishing rods. That's what it is. I found one. My dad didn't fish. I found the rod. I was interested in it. I was about eight years old, just as a kid playing in the yard, you know. Then one day, I was literally about nine years old. It was like a year after I saw a fly fishing show on TV. thought it was cool. Um, my neighbor had an old fly fishing rod. He saw me outside fishing. He'd offered it to me. I accepted the offer, started casting, and that was it. Nothing happened. I was about 14 and discovered Michael and Young Fly Shop in Surrey and used to ride my bike down there and hang out in the shop. And I used to bum rides to the Skagit and just the progression just went there. And then I ended up working for about nine years for a distribution company and that fueled the passion even more. And then, then life came along and kids came along and I had to get a grown-up job for a bit. And then when, when the opportunity arose to come back into the industry, I wanted to come back in a different way. And that's where the, a friend of mine mentioned, you know, you know, I was going to go back into like a guiding thing time or whatever. And he said, why don't you go back, uh, taking pictures and video and started doing that. And people started noticing the pictures and video and started doing stuff. And then eventually I, you know, I couldn't take some of the product sponsors to the bank you know and so i had to do some video work for other people and that really went really well and so i then applied for a job and i ended up working for and i continue to work for uh, uh the, the company that produced bc outdoors uh television show and their media content that's awesome so cameras and equipment i mean yeah geez you got you got a few of them <laughs> So what was your first camera? Like, let's talk, let's talk some camera tech because I'm sure a lot of people that, you know, uh, that are in this, in this game and have this passion, it's all about images now and video too. So what was your first camera? GoPro. The GoPro. Absolutely. L list your equipment. Let's see if you can do that right now. <laughs> first disclaimer, uh, for those of you, all equipment is safely stored away in an insured off-site location. So oh, maybe don't list your equipment. <laughs> not by the house, you won't find anything other than battery cases and blah. Uh, you can but, always say a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, 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 I'm actually. Uh, I, that's the part of the job I love. Is I'm, I'm a gear whore. I love new gear, and I love gear that allows me to like do what I want to do. And so anyway, I bought a GoPro, and then about a month later, I told my wife I'm going to buy another GoPro. I said, I can't explain to you at this point why I need two, but I do. <laughs> he just shook her up and said, okay. So I bought two, and then I bought two more, and then I realized I didn't need four GoPros. I needed a better camera. So I looked into and I ended up getting a DSLR, a Sony A. It was an A57. And uh, as soon as I saw the first bit of footage come out of it, I went, oh, I get this now. I understand depth of field, and I, I, I get what people. And then I went into the Sony Alpha series, and to this day, I still use the A7s and the A6300, and uh, you have the A6500, which I'll, I yeah, would that's happily. That's right there. That's the one I'm pointing into. Uh, I would happily steal that from your truck if you weren't looking. <laughs> <laughs> that camera is it's got the in body stabilization, which is amazing. It can, you know, you, when you're running into problem filters. With that camera, you can slow your shutter speed down to 
below 180 off of whatever your frame rate is and it, it'll stabilize hold it so yeah great it's 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 so nice to have access to like you know before it was just consumer tools but now you know the average person has access to pro pro tools and editing equipment and it's changed man it's a it's a different world yeah and then when i i came across the opportunity to get my hands on a red and uh yeah yeah those are those are badass i love my I now use it most of the time you know i'm one of those guys out there that you know putting up instagram clips made on a red camera yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, it's just something about the red. I've offered it to anybody anytime he wants. He never takes me up on it. No kind way. Nope. Grateful nope. at the same time. but. Uh, oh, you're going camping, dude. Here's my Land Rover for the weekend. Go for it. Just take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on your – it's part of your profession with BCO TV, with your hobby with Tightline, uh, your after-hours work, um, doing – um, edit clips and video production for small companies and people. How how many hours a week are you editing? You must be editing all the time. All the time. All the time. I, my wife hates it because I don't have a proper sleep schedule. Uh, mostly by choice. A lot by choice. I mean, I could budget my time better. I mean, last night I shot a spot for a friend and I emailed her the finished product at about two quarter after two in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Already started, so the the old uh, drink coffee and keep editing. Exactly. <laughs> Start Red Bull. Crazy. It's it's we were talking about this before, man. It's it's a different world now. Like in ten years from you know ten years ago, the the amount of footage and, and and images and things that we're seeing now, it's crazy out there. Like it's it's this is a big thing now. And um, what. Is, would you have any recommendations for you know for anglers for you know some basic equipment to pick up so they can start capturing or getting a you know plus one footage? Absolutely, uh, anything above a Hero Five is golden. Yeah, save your money. Uh, this is where you want to put your most on. Save your money and buy the sessions. The sessions are great because you're going to run it off your phone anyway. You're not going to look at the back screen, so save mm -hmm. two hundred bucks session series uh but yeah like those gopros for the average guy the bad you, you can toss them in your bag and forget about them um there's no maintenance they charge in your cigarette lighter and with that new flat profile they don't look like the old days of the old yeah. skateboard yeah they're uh they're that's that's my suggestion for that um you know or go online and pick up yourself and you know, any of the alpha series cameras if you want to get a little more serious with what you actually yeah. you know more cinematic stuff like that but then you got to walk like i mean i'm sure you're finding out how to store that is a nightmare yeah yeah and the red red is shooting it's quarters of a gig a minute i think too um you know gopro there's a lot of people that have gopros i just there's a lot of people that aren't using their gopros mm -hmm. and i think the benefit too is if you just take a little more time and maybe look at the apps that come with it the editing apps you can do this stuff right on your phone now so you yeah. don't need to do like what you're doing you know hundreds of hours a week is um the editing is the hard part so yeah user friendly for sure yeah editing is it's it's a bittersweet thing editing's fun and it sucks at the same time yeah <laughs> so like with the show with the tv show it's so repetitive and you have to be very systematic. I can show you this. An example here. Let's just make sure it's all clear. He's pulling um, out the hardware, folks. He's pulling out the hardware. I flash it really quickly here because some of it's sensitive. But this is uh, get ready to do your screenshot. This is a production sheet. Yikes. That's all stuff that has to be in my brain, and I got to remember it. And, you know, you go like check TV and you got what got sent out to closed captioning. Check TV gets this this size wrapper on their phone, uh, file. WFN gets this wrapper and uh, it goes on and on and on. And then same for commercials. And that, that's something right out of it, right? You know, people are like, oh, your job is great. You get to go out there and hang off the back of a boat and film all this stuff. Yeah, I do. But the rest of the year, I don't. <laughs> no doubt. Well, saying, speaking about that, hanging off the back of a boat. Um, you get to film kind of 
everywhere what's your favorite you know when you know you're gonna go shoot a certain fishing or outdoor scenario what what gets you going river like river river yeah i know i'm supposed to say uh stony lake lodge but no you're not supposed to say yeah but See. literally the Pit river because it's just there's so much going on and yeah for any river scene you know the jet boat kind of stuff I, I like you know as much as i like still waters i i prefer moving water yeah, it. still waters is tough too because you're boat based, right? You got you have more uh, more room to move and angles and things to do when you're on foot for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you sold me my first drone. Thanks for that. I mean, yeah, it's a game changer. It's also scary, but you're doing a ton of drone footage and you fly drones all the time. What's your lineup there? What do you got? How changed the rules too on us? Yeah, it's getting even trickier now. Not. Uh, it's not as simple, but uh, I still I per, I used the Phantom Four Pro uh, yeah. for the longest time. I got myself an Inspire, and I just realized, you know, the Phantom Four Pro shoots at four K sixty um, and four K thirty and everything. Blah blah blah. It's compact, it's light, and it's half the price, uh, and it flies twice as long as an Inspire. So unless I was going to get an Inspire two, and the, the, the only reason that get the Inspire 2 is if you are a huge production house and you're forced to need a camera to f for like an Aerial X or a Red. Gotcha. Or, or you want to look more, you want, you want it to make more sense to the customer why you're charging them. You know, if I pull out my drone, I run into issues with the guy going, oh, my kid has one of those drones. It's like, well, sure he does, but I use it like I do. He hasn't got the, you know, the insurance like I do. Yeah. We're, inspire they just go well i don't want to talk to that guy because i don't know what even that thing is right so there's sure. there's that you have it to look professional or you have it because you need to replace a, a specific lens right right i don't know if that answered your question it totally <laughs> does yeah and it's, it's it's the unknown world it's, it's changed so fast too but i mean the well, footage now, is incredible right like now we got to be licensed you got to yeah. go it's an easy, it's like the boulders license right it's a ten dollar yeah. Might as well just mail them a ten dollar tax or thing, right? Yeah. Just give them tax. Um, but it's like what they do in the states, where you they then issued a code, and that code goes on your drone. So if your drone goes missing, they know who it is, which is uh, I mean, it's not wrong, but it needs to happen. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So let's talk about um, you know we we were at the, kind of the the top end level of you know production. Let's go all the way down to let's talk about phones, man, like iPhones, uh, smartphones. And you know what, the average angler out there, people can be shooting cool stuff and making cool content on their phones too. But I think, you know, I think people forget that when they're out. They do they do take shots, but they can be shooting cool videos. And do you have tips for that? Because I know you've set me up with a few cool tools. I got, I got, yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Steven Spielberg made a movie using iPhones and I. Yeah, listen, listen up, kids. Go, right you don't need all that fancy stuff. it's all about what your eye sees right uh tips right uh well i'm the art director at bc outdoors will probably buy me a beer for saying this if you're taking a phone shot of your fish take two take one in landscape and take one in vertical portrait because vertical portrait is the only one you can ever hand into a magazine if you hand in a landscape photo they'll throw it out right away Good tip. Because you can't use it, can't make the eight. So just remember that. That's your thing. Take two photos if you think it's, you ever wanted to set the outdoors. Take it vertically and then take yours horizontally for your frame. And I bet you know a lot of people out there are doing that. That's a great tip. What about what about um, um, shooting shooting short clips and stuff on phones and stabilization? Uh, well, the first thing I would do is I everybody makes the same mistake. Just shoot it don't don't think you know when you're going to cut as soon as you cut you're going to miss it just shoot the whole thing cut it later so if you go home and you got like if somebody if i've got a bunch of files and i go home and i got a hundred clips that's uh, going to kill me because now i got to drag in all my hundred clips whereas if i drag in one long clip i can just go through and set my marker points so the same thing for yourself you know it's a digital world you can throw it away it's not film right so if you're filming something you got you know your buddy's got a fish on as soon as he sets the hook, you start filming, and don't stop until he stands up to shake your hand. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah, and I think what a lot of people don't know 
or don't pay attention to is when you go back into your phone and look at that video clip, there's that little edit, little edit button at the top. And it's just a simple drag on each end and that saves a ton of storage and it gets you the right shot after. That's a good tip, just film it all. When we film the show, I'm in the, I'm usually with the best person for the area with the best gear at the best possible time. So we know we're gonna get fish. There are times where it's a struggle, but it's it's a lot easier for get the takes and the sets than the average person that you know their buddy when you're like for instance you felt trying to film a steelhead movie. When do you know the grab's gonna come? Nobody knows the grab's gonna come. Yeah, right. <laughs> it helps though if you have just that you know when you like this feels like the sweet spot. Well, if it feels like the sweet spot, start rolling. Yeah. Just if it doesn't work out 20 minutes later, just throw the file out. Yeah. Yes. Keep rolling. Absolutely. Um, Instagram's changed a lot. I'm going to, I'm going to, this is a perfect time to talk to someone about it. What do you think about uh, the sport fishing and the fly fishing game that's going on on Instagram? I love it. I love anything social media for one reason and one reason only. People sit, worry about it giving away their private areas and their secret areas. Well, guess what? If nobody goes out there and enjoys it and nobody knows it's there, nobody will care for it. But go, enjoy it, take your picture. Just don't leave your garbage behind. Super. I mean, and think about it. It's, 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 in, it's helping in a certain aspect, educating other people on the rights and wrongs too. You know, and, and proper fish handling and etiquette and things like that. It, you know, it, you don't see a lot of, you know, you don't see a lot of wrong stuff on Instagram c- compared to, say, Facebook. It is weird how that is. It, like, Instagram is, like, the the, the fun party. Yeah. Facebook, like, people that drank too much Starbucks coffee and are just pissed off at everything. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, less, con- less, less chance to type the better, but I think it, it's the glossier content for sure too. It just better stuff seems to end up there. So what's next then? What do you, what do you see? I'm sure I know you, man. You must think about, you're thinking about things all the time. What do you think's next in this whole game of um, images and video and social media? I'm going to put all my stuff in an implant and just jab it right in the back of your head. <laughs> to subscribe if you give me box i'll take it out <laughs> watch the shit over and over black again. mirrored little chips behind the ear yeah my commercials with my choice they were like 20 minutes long and like i said you give me 20 bucks i'll take it out that's how i'll make my money love it love it hey uh we're getting close to our to our uh, to our time limit i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you a question if uh what's what's the what's the best tool that a consumer can go out and add to their already ha- arsenal video or, or still wise that's not too expensive batteries and memory cards batteries and memory cards what if they're just using a phone external battery that they can plug their phone into oh like the, re- the rechargeable hubs yeah, yeah you've been keeping yourself charged uh recently i bought a uh, from you uh, a stabilizer yeah. gimbal yep. and it, it it's awesome but the only thing that i find is i just don't take it as much so that goes along with the with planned shoots obviously but i wish i got to remind myself to take that with me more yeah like i i you know i used i used it for a couple projects that i needed it for but i don't use my phone as much as i probably should because yeah. but i use the, the ronin s get the gear get the gear around here somewhere yeah. it's behind that cool backdrop <laughs> We want to see what's behind the backdrop before I go. <laughs> that's animal chain is tied up. I can't show. Oh, that's right. Well, awesome, man. Thanks for your time tonight. It's uh, Saturday night, and it's, what, 8.30 now. It's been a pleasure, man. It's good talking to you. This is just part one. Hopefully, we can have part two and three with you and keep the conversation going. Well, I'm going to bed because we're leaving for Vegas tomorrow day and night. So. Say that again. It broke up. You're going to Vegas tomorrow morning? Yeah, we're just going for the night. So... Damn, twenty-four hour tour. Yeah, so if I, uh, I'll do number two. Pick it up. Well, so and also before we leave, how can everybody find you? What's the best way to find your content? Uh, Instagram, uh, Tightline Films on Instagram. Uh, we also have Outside BC and uh, Tightline Films on Facebook too. Awesome. I'll be the guy with the microchip and behind you. 
Right on, man. Well, thanks again. And thank you to everybody for tuning in. This is Stalefish Podcast video number three.